what I wanted to talk about is uh, new Blazor features in .NET 10. So that's what we're going to do next. So I've got .NET 10 Preview 2 installed on my dev machine. I have a slightly different uh, setup than what, what Mike showed you. I just installed .NET 10 Preview 2 directly on my machine. I have that side by side with my existing .NET installations like .NET 9, side by side with .NET 10 Preview 2. And then I've also got both Visual Studio Stable, like the, the current stable release of 17.13 uh, of Visual Studio, and then also Visual Studio Preview, which is 17.14. And if I use the stable VS, then I pick up my stable .NET SDK. If I use the uh, preview version of VS, it will just automatically pick up the latest .NET 10 preview that I have installed. So that's what I'm doing. That's why you can see I'm using the latest uh, Visual Studio preview uh, here on my, on my machine. So what's new with Blazor in uh, .NET 10 preview 2? Well, there's a, a couple new things that we want to give a, a call out to. Um, first of all, you, as you can see here, I've got a new Blazor web app and I've set it up to show a list of movies. I'm using uh, Quick Grid uh, to display these movies. And what I want to do is I'd like to uh, style the movies in my Quick Grid uh, based off of like their release year. Like if it's an old movie, I kind of want to gray it out. If it's a new movie, I want it to kind of pop, like be highlighted maybe with like a some sort of colorful background color. How can I do that? Well, in .NET 10, there's a new uh, property, a new parameter on QuickGrid, which is the row class parameter that you can now use. And you can pass in a little delegate here that, spec that returns a CSS class based off of the data for that current row. So for example, here, what I want to do, that's not the right thing. Let me copy the right thing over here. I'll come forward with a little stale. I want to add some code into my row class parameter that will look at the current movie. There we go and look at its release year and then check to see, well, is it new? Then it returns a new CSS class that will get added to just that row. If it's older than 2000, then it will style it as uh, with the old class. Let's go ahead and uh, add that to our app. And you can see, poof, like all of my movies that are old are now kind of gray and the new ones are showing up uh, blue. I had some CSS styles I'd already set up for that in my app.css file. So that's the row class parameter. It lets you style the rows in your quick grid based off of each uh, the data for that particular row. All right, what else? So let's look at this uh, little filter uh, UI that I've got on the movie titles. I can use this to, to like filter down the movie list of specific movies. Like let's look for all the ones about rings. And if I hit enter, that applies a filter. And you can see I'm now I'm showing only the, the Lord of the Rings uh, movies. But you can see that the um, this little UI, this little column options UI is what this is called, that it's still showing up and it will disappear if I like click off of it. There it goes away. But it stays until uh, until I'm done like typing whatever I was typing. Like it, it, it persists until unless I click off of the UI. Uh, how can I uh, control that? I'd like to be able to actually have that UI be hidden or closed as soon as I'm done applying uh, a filter. Well, we can now do that in .NET 10 Preview 2. What we can do is we can say that after the we apply the filter, after we do this um, this filter binding in that, that text box, what I want to do is add a little bit more code here and say after the binding, let's do this right, right like that. Okay, so after the binding, I want to call this new method on QuickGrid, which is close column options async. And this is just an API that says, you know what? I'm done with the column, column options. Go ahead and hide them. You might be wondering, well, where's this uh, movie grid uh, variable coming from? That's coming from down below where I am capturing an instance of the, the movie grid right here. So here's our you know quick grid that we're capturing that movie grid parameter and it's set up above as a, a ref that's telling Blazor, hey, like take this quick grid component instance and, and capture it right here down in my, uh, my fields. All right, so if we go ahead and apply that change to the browser, now watch what happens. So if I, let, me, let me go ahead and clear the, um, uh, the, the filter. So now if I add another filter for, I don't know, uh, matrix to matrix movies. And as soon as I hit enter, ready, enter, you can see that the filter gets applied and the UI for the column options automatically closes. So that's kind of nice. This was actually a, a contribution from a community member from uh, this gentleman, uh, Matt Hetherington, I think is his name. Uh, thank you so much, Matt, for this uh, PR that you, you sent us. Great, great feature. Okay, what else can we do? Let me give, a, give a, get a back all our movies. Um, the uh, navigation uh, features in Blazor. We've been doing some investments in .NET 10 to improve how navigation works, uh, how scroll position gets handled, and how like, uh, um, like the, 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 how Navlink highlights like what's the currently active active route. 
to show this, what I'm going to do, let's let's look at our uh, current URL. We're currently at the, the root of the app. We're on the home page. So at slash, yeah, just the, the slash root of the application. Now down at the bottom, if I scroll to the bottom, I have a button. And this button, if we look in the code right here, you can see that this is going to use Navigation Manager to do a navigate to. And if we scroll to the right to see the rest of that code, we can see that it's going to just add a uh, query string parameter uh, to the current URL. It's not going to change the path, but it's just going to add a query string parameter. So what happens with that in .NET 10 Preview 2? If I click that, we can see up above, I know it looks like nothing happened, but you can see there's the new URI. Like We did add the query string parameter, but notice that my scroll position didn't change. Like It didn't jump. This is actually a fairly common pattern where you're on a page and then you do some UI gesture and you add something to the to the URL as a query string parameter. And in previous releases, this would actually lose your scroll position. It would jump you up to the top. .NET 10 Preview 2, it no longer does that by the default. Of course, if you want it to still do that, you can add this force uh, load uh, parameter, set that to true. And then if we uh, hot reload that into the application, now, if I like, let's see, let's go back to home. So we clear out the query string parameter. Let's add it back. And now you can see I, I'm back to, to jumping up to the top, if that's the behavior you want. For most people, we think that's probably not what you intended, not what you wanted. So uh, we uh, leave that as the default behavior that will uh, preserve your scroll position. OK, other thing to note is that when we add that query string parameter, let me do it once more. Let's go to home to clear it off. And I'm going to add it back. Now, if I look at the nav menu, notice that the home link is still highlighted like it still has the nav link active class to say that this is the active url that i'm on so you know adds a little uh, decoration to the ui style it uh, appropriately that's a new behavior in dotnet 10 preview 2 that we will now ignore the query string parameters and the the url fragments on the uri when doing the uh, nav link uh, matching behavior to decide if this is the current active link or not so that's kind of nice uh you get the, the the you get your current link still showing up as as selected uh, even if you uh, like do something that changes the, the query string or something like that. OK, so those are some improvements to navigation and how we handle scroll position. Last thing I want to show you is because I've used the new .NET 10 Preview 2 version of the Blazor Web App template to, to build this application, we have a new component that's in our project. We have this reconnect modal, uh, razor file. And if we open that up, we can see that this is the uh, uh, an implementation of the reconnection UI that you use when you're using interactive server rendering. And let's say the connection gets lost. Like maybe you go into a tunnel or something and you lost your network connection. Now the app can't connect to the server to make the, uh, the UI function. Uh, Blazor server apps would uh, normally display a default reconnection UI to let the user know, hey, like I'm in a disconnected state. I'm going to try to reconnect. Uh, in .NET 10, you can now uh, use this component to customize that UI however you'd like. You could customize it before, but now it's right there in the template ready for you to modify. You can localize it. You can you know, switch to dark mode or whatever styling you, you'd want. Like For example, maybe I decide I don't have enough uh, emojis in my life. So let's add like a you know, phone emoji when we're trying to reconnect to the server. And if we can't reconnect for some reason, uh, let's add like a you know, sad face emoji here. And then if we go to the server for this application, I'm just going to close it so that we trigger the reconnection UI to show up. There you can see there's our customized now reconnection UI for when we're doing interactive server-side renderings. You can change this UI however you'd like, and the code's right there in the template for you to, to modify. So those are all uh, the, the new things that are available for you in .NET 10 Preview 2. Of course, there's Lots more that's new in ASP.NET Core. So like uh, uh, James was mentioning before, if you haven't already checked out the What's New doc for ASP.NET ASP Core and .NET 10, uh, check it out. We're keeping it up to date with all the latest new preview features.